Hello everyone, Strategic Sage here with another AI War 2 patch update. Gonna have some news on multiplayer, the upcoming Zenith Onslaught DLC, along with everything happening from 2.127, which was the last update video I did at the end of August, through 2.604, which is where we are as of a day or two ago. So first up on the multiplayer front, with some of the fixes that have gone in over the last couple of weeks, that it is definitely not stable yet, but it is playable. People have been able to get through an entire game. There's some reconnecting and reloading that needs to happen in order to do that. But they've been hammering away at the various desyncs and other errors. So as far as the second expansion, Zenith Onslaught is concerned, Chris Park posted on Steam about a week ago, new timeline that has been delayed. Right now they're expecting multiplayer to be finished sometime in November. And Zenith Onslaught's probably pushed back to January. He wants to add some more things to it. There's some balancing that will need to happen, and none of that can really occur until after multiplayer is finished. It's not at all certain, but they're hoping to add interplanetary weapons to that. And the view from the other testers on the inside is that it's shaping up to be outstanding. People have said things like you could remove half of the content and it would still be a really good expansion, but some of the aspects being added challenge and put pressure on the player in different ways that nothing in the vanilla or spire expansions has yet done but it is going to be pushed back and then on the patch front over the past month most of the effort has been on the multiplayer but there are some other things that have happened the nano cost got some tweaks they now prioritize defending systems close to their home world and if they knock out a ship that is can't be nano costed they still don't get a copy of that ship but they can get a copy of a different ship, one of the core nanocost types of ships in some cases. It was generally felt that they were not as dangerous as they used to be, and so they wanted to boost them back up. Dark Spire, when they go conquest mode, other factions will now target their vulnerable vengeance generators. As a compensation, those vengeance generators are tougher, and they will get somewhat more energy. So there's more interplay involved there. The change to the eyes, which I mentioned in the last patch video, was softened almost immediately. You can now leave a couple of guard posts up on the planet and still take down the eye. Additionally, they don't all default to Mark 7 anymore. They'll default to Mark 5 unless they're on a high Mark planet. Then they'll scale up to the more elevated tiers. Continuing improvements on the Hunter Fleet AI, and that's continuing even past where we are now. The next patch is going to have more of that, so... That'll be a recurring theme. And there's something called AI overconfidence. How much of a force does AI need to have compared to what it's attacking before it will take the plunge and go ahead with that attack? And the lower difficulties, it's intentionally stupid. It, it will attack with only half the force on difficulty six or below. But the change here is that the AI overconfidence level has been reduced, meaning that in the higher difficulties, eight and above, it will now need to have somewhat more than what it's attacking, and so it won't throw its forces away as much in attacks that are doomed to fail. AI budgeting has also changed in a couple of ways. One is that at the end of the game, when you're putting pressure on the AI homeworld, it will shunt as much resources as it needs into things like the Praetorian Guard and won't attack you as much with waves. And it was generally felt that this actually made the end game less dangerous because as long as you were threatening the homeworld, then you could be fairly safe and it was just a matter of how much time it took you to plow through. Now they're not going to make that change anymore. So as a result, the end game will be more dangerous to the player, but also go by more quickly if you're successful. The other budgeting logic that has changed is the AI will no longer shift its budget around. In other words, if the Warden fleet has reached its cap, or resources that would normally go into wormhole invasions, but you've turned wormhole invasions off in your game, those will no longer get shoved into a different category. The AI will simply wait and not do those things until it has an opportunity to. In other words, if you knock down a bunch of the Warden, then it will put more into that. And if something's off, it's just off. The AI doesn't get to use that budget for other purposes. And so that's going to keep more guardrails in place in terms of the total amount of force the AI is going to get for any particular aspect. And there also are some new settings to take a look at. Here's the experimental nanocost getting the bonus ships. But then also some of the included mods here that are default off, but you can turn them on. The Spire Railgun Shop and the civilian industry has been out for a while. Feel free to pause the video and read up on those if you're interested in trying them. 
More starting options by Arnaud B. And he's one of the top AI War 2 players. Requires the first expansion, but this gives you a bunch more choices. You can see seven more starting fleets, 15 starting battle stations. These basically are intended to just give you more choice at the beginning of the game. If you don't like the default ones that are in there, or you just want to try something different. And then there is also one which is probably the biggest change. It's the reason for the Thousand Screaming Idiots title of the patch. Cross planet attacks. Now under this different logic, they would use twice as many ships, meaning the AI is going to empty out the reinforcements from their planets much more quickly. But they're going to attack you all over the place. And they're going to attack you whether they have a good chance of winning or not. And so the hunter fleet might join in with that, think you a little crazy. It could be a very double-edged scenario as opposed to them just hanging back in a threat ball and waiting to come in at you later. So here's an example of how that might look from my current game, an example from early on. This is about two hours in, I was about to hit the first CPA, I just cleared out this system in Unity, and initially I wanted to try to defend some here in Dunkles, but then I ended up having to come out here because if I'd allowed the CPA to hit under the old logic, what was gonna happen is over here in BAME, they were going to cluster a bunch of Warden Fleet and a bunch of Hunter Fleet from the CPA, and it was a block that I couldn't get by, so I had to go more aggressive. Again, old CPA, they'll collect and only attack if they have a big advantage. Now, differently, in this case, I would have definitely gotten attacked on both sides. would have been kind of piecemeal, but I wouldn't have had to worry about them adding to Hunter Fleet and clustering up with the Warden, they're going to come after you. The question is, would I have enough force on each side? I would have had to make sure I built up turrets on each side, maybe split up my fleet. And if I could repel it, things would have gotten easier for me. But it's also possible that the force of that could have overwhelmed me and I wouldn't have been able to. So if you turn on the tsunami option, very double-edged, but you can't delay them. They're coming, whether it's a good idea for them to come or not. And then finally, there is some new lore. If you start a new game on some of the most recent patches, it's not back compatible with the older games. You get some of these. This is just your basic backstory in AI. In this case, the Civil War lasted 800 years between humans and the AI basically finished it. Only scattered pockets of humans remain. AI is unaware of you, etc. So it gives you a little bit more presently in the game, sort of this idea that you've got to fight an underground hit and run type of campaign, go after the core. Some of this is from the backstory that was on the main menu, but they're now giving it to you in the game. There's also one for the Spire, if you've got that expansion, and there's going to be one for the Zenith, when the Zenith Onslaught expansion hits. And so they're starting to add more of these lore information into the journals, which I think is all for the positive. It's definitely something a lot of people enjoyed in Classic. So that's where we are. Thanks for watching, everybody.